Okay, here I'm going to go over the very basics of plant breeding. And first and foremost, there's kind of two ways to look at this. Uh, there's the traditional way, which is what I'm going to focus on here, where you have a donor variety strand and a recipient, and you're kind of getting that mix of that new variety. And we have genetic engineering, which is where we're taking these very specific desired gene and very precisely inserting it into the DNA sequence. So this is still breeding because you are still producing a new individual, uh, but in this case, it's a very directed and only producing that desired gene being transferred at one time. Uh, traditional is kind of that many genes are transferred and the hope is that desired gene will carry over. And here's that desired gene. Hope that desired gene is carried over, but there's also going to be some other carryover. Genetic engineering is going to take the, just that desired gene and only insert that one. We're going to, again, focus a little bit more on the traditional breeding here. So peer reading lines. So starting with the basics, this is established lines that come true from seed. Uh, in order for this to happen, there needs to be a limited amount of variation and reduced amount of heterozygosity. The genetics need to be either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Uh, this is different than clones because clones are taking the same plant material. Here we're having a male and female, we're having a cross breeding that's occurring, but essentially all of the offspring are the same. So there would not be high variability. So I have the X over the puppies here. Pure breeding lines is always going to kind of come true from type. Uh, whatever you get in the parents, you're going to cross two parents, are going to be very similar, and you're going to get basically the same thing as a result. You're not going to get different colors, different splotches, uh, and different coat patterns. Now, so other terms used, such as crossing, selfing, and sieving. These are common terms used within growers and used when they're generating seeds or generated crosses. So the first or obvious one is crossbreeding. This is simple breeding of two different varieties together, and this can create the highest degree of genetic variability. Here we see a um, homozygous recessive green color uh, pea pod, and here we see a heterozygous uh, pea pod with, um, one, with yellow being dominant. We cross these together and we see the variability that we get not only in phenotype, how they look, but also in genotype. And we can kind of see the same thing down here when we're looking at our Punnett square. We have two purple flowers, both heterozygotes, meaning they both contain this other recessive gene. When we breed these together, we get 75% or three out of four phenotypes will be purple. One will have a white phenotype. If we look at the genotypes, one is homozygous dominant out of four. One out of four will be homozygous recessive and two will be heterozygotes. This means that this will always produce um, the purple gene. If it's bred with another homozygous dominant, all their offspring will be considered pure breeding. The same goes for the pure breeding white here, where they're homozygous recessive. These, though, create a little bit more variability, just as we see here. So again, phenotype, genotype, crossbreeding will kind of create the highest degree of variability. Something called selfing. This, as the name implies, it's taking pollen and fertilizing the same plant. No, in cannabis, this is, because they're monoecious, this is very difficult to do. This is the concept of kind of getting that feminized seed, so to speak. This selfing in general, as you see here with the uh, lily flower, this restricts the genetic variability of the offspring. You simply have the male pollen fertilizing the same uh, female here. So this is going to limit the genetic variability. Uh, sibbing, this is taking two seeds from the same plant, and that's the same individual plant, and using one plant for pollen and the other for the flower. This is a way to create a small amount of variability because they both came from the exact same uh, original plant uh, in the offspring. So you're getting some variability, but not a lot. And this is kind of if you're looking at maybe refining something or selecting for something more specific. Uh, so what's a hybrid? So I use corn as the example because hybrid corn is probably pretty well known and understood. Uh, hybrids are, are botanically different uh, as an offspring from two plants that are different species or varieties. So what this actually does, what a hybrid does, it creates a mixture of genetics and is often the result of some crossbreeding, depending on what plants specifically crossbred. So what does this kind of mean in an example? Well, we could see these two different um, corn plants that were crossbreeding together. This one produces very small kernels, this one produces very large kernels, but it's kind of a smaller um, cob itself. We can crossbreed these two and develop a hybrid. This hybrid has larger kernels, um, but more of this longer shape to it, and maybe has a greater area. So this is the result of this would be a hybrid where you're kind of seeing evidence of both of the parents resulting in the offspring. Now we get into something called F1 hybrids, and this is hybrid vigor. 
uh, it's thought to produce seeds or plants that are 25% bigger uh, than either parent alone. Well, how is an F1 hybrid example here? Uh, how's this accomplished? Well, by developing two distinctly stable breeding lines, so we have violet and white flowers for obvious examples, we would self cross these for about seven to nine generations and self across white flowers in this example for seven to nine generations. After we have these two isolated generations, uh, we breed them together. We would cross these together to ideally, hopefully, create the best of both worlds in the resulting F1 offspring. So what does this kind of look like in real life? Well, this is kind of a nice example here that I found. Uh, we are seeing seeds offer hybrid vigor, which can not be obtained directly from a clone. Hybrids are created by crossing two true breeding parents to produce F1 seeds and grow more vigorous than each parent. And we see parent one on this side, parent two on this side. And these are um, corn plants. This is the hybrid here. So we can see as we go through this time lapse, uh, showing the progression, you can see that this, this plant here uh, tends to produce bigger uh, and better than either of the um, lines that it was used to breed with. And again, this isn't growing to full terms, it's growing for about a little over 30 days. We can see even from the beginning, the wider leaves, the bigger plant than either of the offspring there. So again, just interested to see how uh, hybrid vigor can play out, and this is something you cannot get from clones. Uh, lastly, we hear something called the F2 generation. Well, this is further generations are just continuations of the original breeding lineage, and it's tracked through a family tree or pedigree. The downfall is the resulting F2 generations. Uh, offspring may vary greatly from the F1 parents. So we take a pure breeding line, a pure breeding line, kind of self that for seven to nine generations. We get our hybrid vigor, but then if we plant that seeds from that F1 generation, we could get something that may revert back to one of the original. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you ever um, have some hybrid plants or hybrid tomatoes that you grow. You save the seeds, you may get offspring that look nothing like the original because it's reverting back to one of the original generations.